Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another wonderful Word of Encouragement spiritual teaching video from me, Pastor Deborah, to you, a precious one. I'm here at home today, and we're still in 2023. I am trying to get things together ahead for, Jan for 2024, I'm trying to record as quick as I can. Of course, it takes me a couple days to edit to upload and get them ready to premiere. Here on this word of encouragement for you, in January 2024, this should be the fourth one of this month, and then we'll begin in February. This word of encouragement is gonna ask you a question. There's two parts of you. One, there is a spiritual part that I have called the forever person. The one who lives on after death. We all kind of know about him. We think about him. We uh, look sometimes down on him. But he is there. The other part of us called the hidden man of the heart. That's this guy right in here of your soul. Of your biological body and brain. It's called the soul. It was intended to be the helpmate of you, the forever person, the spiritual part. There's a good teaching going to be coming, and some have already had, about the relationship of the forever person, the spirit, and its helpmate, the soul. The soul is in direct connection with the physical body and the five senses. The spirit does not have direct communication with, direct contact with, the world of flesh, the natural world. So he relates spiritual things to his soul. His soul then is to relate it through the physical body, paintings, music, art, mu movies, books, speeches, writings, poems. So our souls, our helpmate can get deep spiritual information. It is a complicated system. It's the best way I can explain it, which will help relate us to this video from Google Free Clip Art. This is the king of the kingdom of heaven, up on his throne, high up on a mountain. If you watch a lot of ancient historical dramas, a lot in Chinese and early European, governments, you will see a king and a kingdom. The king always sits high up on a throne in glory and majesty. All of his ministers and everybody else is below him. That was the pattern. We were given that early on, but it's all messed up because then our soul takes it and does other things with it. But here in this video, we are going to learn a little bit more about ourselves the relationship of our forever person to our soul and out to the world. We're going to be asking you a question, as I always do on your words of encouragement. As a global master teacher and a spiritual mother to the nations, our job is to ask you questions so you can think about things. We're to demonstrate through our lives the pattern the knowledge and the truth that you should have. You should hear it in our words, in our deeds and our actions. So this is a deep, self-reflective question to you, all of you who watch this. And the question is for you, is whose ways do you commit yourself to? Pastor Deborah can answer that. I am committed to the king of the kingdom of heaven, God of the Holy Bible, the father of Christ Jesus, God, the great I am and creator of all things. Although he did not pervert the things into what we see in the natural world and the evilness and wickedness of the spiritual world, that all came through the nature named Satan. Satan, who used to be Lucifer, one of the high archangels up here 
one of his ministers and servants, trusted for eons. But he decided he wanted the glory and the seat for himself. He wanted the throne. And we say that a lot in ancient Chinese historical dramas, the fights within the family, within the ministers, the soldiers for the throne, and the power and authority and the riches that went with it. So here in this video, we're learning a little bit, but there is another realm out there. There are two kingdoms in it, one the kingdom of heaven and one the kingdom of darkness. As I said, Satan used to be called Lucifer, a high archangel, who had one third of the angels under his care, supervision. Well, he decided he wanted the throne himself. He started having thoughts in here, in his spirit, holding back some of the praise and the glory for himself that he was to pass on to his Lord, his creator. But he didn't want to do that. He wanted to keep it for himself. He wanted to be blessed. He wanted all that the glory and the righteousness that was due to the king, the creator of everything. He wanted some for himself. This began a lusting, a jealousy and envy, perverting his spiritual mind, all of his nature, his wisdom, his gifts, into horrible, e evil, wicked, perverse things. That is what you see in the flesh, because it's coming through the soul, the helpmate, and out through and out from the spirits of all of us, if you are not transformed. So here in this spiritual teaching video, this word of encouragement, number four of 2024, I'm, going to a I'm asking you that question. Whose ways, that means past, thoughts, concepts, ideas, beliefs, do you commit yourself to? I will give you a wonderful example that just happened in my home yesterday to help you understand that. My husband made a statement that he doesn't like a particular war going on between Gaza and Israel because he doesn't like to see the children and the innocent civilians being killed. I said, you don't mean that. If you did, and you really cared, you wouldn't vote for a politician who believes in abortion on demand and that everybody pay for it. I said, that child in the woman's womb is innocent. It is a child. And you vote for a politician who believes in on demand abortion at any stage, even if the child has been born, you are voting for a person who wants to allow the baby to sit on the table and die. I said, that is not righteousness. You have deceived yourself. That is, you are in deception and you are trying to claim that you love the innocent children when you don't. He disagreed with me. But I shut the mouth of that lion because I said that child in there will have you will have to deal with it upon your death. You're not a righteous man, I said. You vote for politicians who believe in abortion on demand, and yet you claim that you don't like this war because it's killing babies and children. What's the difference? Pastor Deborah doesn't even vote. I'm not a part of your government. Your politicians, I'm an ambassador, a king of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ never spoke up against the Romans. He was after the Jewish leaders, the ones who claimed they were for the Lord. My husband is saved. He was a Lutheran, but he lives unrighteously. He does not care for wildlife. He will catch fish with eggs in it and eat the eggs. He's a hunter that has no preservation in him. And yet he thinks he's righteous. That just happened between him and I yesterday. I will challenge anybody 
who's in deception, who thinks they're righteous and they're better than anybody and their opinions are wonderful and they are kind individuals because they care about children and innocent ones. That is what happened in my home yesterday. And that relates to this, because he was not following the ways of his Lord. His Lord was politicians, government. He was a minister of the kingdom of heaven that had gone astray. So I like to tell my personal stories to let you know, I know what goes on out here. I live with one. He is saved. He will be in heaven. But the soul of him is a mess. So I have to endure much from him through the soul and even spiritually. There's a wonderful story. I don't know if I've put it up yet. One night years ago, maybe 25, laying in bed with him. I look over and snakes spiritually were coming out of him. Venomous snakes. And they were going to bite and devour me spiritually. He was an open door to the kingdom of darkness. And I said, oh God, what am I going to do? And he took care of it for me. So I've had to live with somebody like that for over 40 years. His first wife named Jan, who used to be in this body, who died. She took the vow and she got married to him. I, Pastor Deborah, never did, but I will honor Jan's commitment. My husband has nobody else really that are close that will take care of him. I'll make sure he gets buried with an honorable service. He is a retired master chief and he served 26 years of his life to serve the nation. I am from a military family of Air Force officers. We are dedicated, serious people. He deserves to be buried. Be buried in Fort Barrancas with a wonderful ceremony. I will make sure that he is taken care of, even if I, no matter what happens to him, if he gets Alzheimer's or something, and he has to be taken care of. I will do that for a military person. I do not look at him through the eyes of Jan as a husband. It's a strange world and life that I live. And I tell people that so you can understand. I went through a spiritual transformation. I was Jan and I became Pastor Deborah. That story is being told in the playlist called Storytime. I'm sorry, called The School of Light in a story called It's Time. And it has many parts and you will hear about my spiritual transformation. I can talk about these things and teach on them because I have lived through them and I'm still living through most of it. I tell other pastors they need to tell their stories, to tell everybody. I have walked this walk for many, many years. I love the forever person of husband, of Jan's husband, really. I love the forever person in there. It is but a child and a baby. And it has come to me many times asking if I'm okay. It can't do anything. And it feels safe though. I will make sure that it gets in the arms of its father. The great I am. So I walk the ways of the kingdom of heaven. I walk the ways of the Ten Commandments. Spiritually and in the natural. I walk the ways of this kingdom's government of righteousness, love, joy, and peace. So here, in this question to you on your word of encouragement today, of whose ways do you commit yourself to? I have committed myself to the king of the kingdom of heaven. I serve as a minister, as a prince, as a king, as a warrior, as a soldier, as an officer as a child of the Most High God. I am committed to His ways and His ways only. I don't talk much to people. I have really no earthly friends. I am distant from my son. 
family, but I am not distant from him. I am a soldier on a battlefield called Earth. I am in enemy territory most of the time where you are. So let's begin first with prayer and then get into this word of encouragement. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love humanity and always have. You created us to be your children, but we got kidnapped, trafficked, stolen, and fell into deep darkness of ignorance. We fell into our flesh, our, our helpmate became the king, and we became servants submitted to our soul. The pattern got messed up, Father, but you never stopped loving us and helping us. You helped us in the flesh to show us many things. You teach us through dreams and visions, through art and music, through pictures, through movies, through videos. You teach us when we look at a rose, a tree, an animal. You are a teaching God. You have sent us teachers to help us. And the main one for our spirit you have sent is the Holy Spirit to teach us. You have given us the sacrifice that was required to clean us up and purify us and birth us again. Brand new. You gave us your son, Christ Jesus, who went to a cross and stayed and rose from a tomb three days later to show us our spiritual resurrection upon believing in you and your words of spirit and life. Help us now through the Holy Spirit as we learn through this spiritual teaching video, this word of encouragement from Pastor Deborah. And we learn about ourselves, about whose ways, past, do we commit ourselves to. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. All right, we're going to work out of Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Psalms was a, a book in the Bible, the Old Testament, by King David. King David was the second king of ancient Israel. He followed King Saul. David was a songwriter, a poet. He was a praying man, a worshiping man. He had discovered his God, the God that he wrote to, talked to, and served when he was a young boy with sheep and goats out in the pastures by himself. And he wrote this psalm or song, and these are going to help us today to help us self-reflect, to answer this question about whose ways do we follow and we commit ourselves to. Psalms 37, verse number 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. He tells us right there who we're to trust in, the Lord. The Lord means owner, master. Commander, king. So David is saying, the Lord. And do good. When you trust in his God, the one way up there, the God of David, the God of Israel, when you trust in him and do good, so shall you Oh, forever person, dwell, live in the land, the presence of God. You'll be able to come in freely to the Garden of Eden, which is still on planet Earth. You'll be able to travel to the throne in the kingdom of heaven. And truly, you shall be fed and nourished and taught. I can go freely to the throne of God. Talk to him as you see this young man. Down at the very bottom. Right over here. Yeah, I am allowed to go up the stairs and sit on his lap in the light. Most of the time in the spirit, this is what I look like. Just light. Sometimes I'm just a voice in the light. So David is saying, if you will trust in this Lord, 
Get to know him. Believe in him. Look to him as your father, your creator, your God, your Lord, your king, your master. And you do good. When I challenged my husband yesterday about his beliefs, about caring for innocent children and civilians, I was doing good. His soul was being challenged. His beliefs and concepts were being challenged. His voting practices were being challenged. His beliefs that he believed about himself was being challenged. He did not really believe what this God believes about innocent ones and children. His actions and deeds in the world of the flesh reflect the total opposite. He votes to kill them, sacrifice the children, the ones in the womb to Moloch. He chooses to shed blood of innocent ones by voting for a politician who is part of a political party, could be in your country, in your nation. But you try to make yourself look good in your own eyes that you're a righteous person. And I challenged that yesterday. He didn't like it, but it shut the mouth of that lion up and those words. And here, David is telling us, if we will do that, our forever person, the spiritual part of us, if we dwell in and live in this presence. The story is that this God up here wanted to expand his territory. He had the whole spirit realm. He had a traitor and a rebellious one, Lucifer, he lost one third of his angels. And what he had wanted to do was expand, is what a king does. They're always expanding their territory. So he created the world of the natural. We see it with our natural eyes. It's called the kingdom of the flesh. It's a temporary world. And here's this, how it was supposed to work. Us, the forever person, would be sent through an egg and a sperm, into the womb of a woman, a wombed spiritual being. We would get a dirt body of the earth. Our spirits would come into it when the heart beats. Our spirit is there. And the physical dirt body would provide for us a helpmate in this natural world. And this natural world was to learn about here, be ruled by, managed in righteousness with the laws of the kingdom and the king of heaven. My spirit inside of me, my forever person, was to be the king of this kingdom of spirit, soul, and physical body first. Then I was to take that pattern out into the world of the flesh and rule and reign nature Everything on the planet that was not of God, that means the kingdom of darkness, put at dark angels and evil, wicked spirits in their place. That was the pattern. We were sort of colonists sent to colonize the kingdom of the flesh on planet Earth. We were to be the governors, the spiritual leaders who were getting governance and teaching through the Holy Spirit. That was the pattern that was to be. And God then would have ruled the spirit kingdom of heaven, which he does. When I go there, I'm a prince. I'm not a king because I'm not on the throne. Where I become a full king like he is, is on planet Earth. And in my system of spirit, soul, and physical body. God is a deep God and you have to study him. Too many people don't study him enough. Verse number four. Spiritually delight. That means have pleasure in. Be happy. 
spiritually delight yourself, O you the forever person, and your soul, who is your helpmate, also in the Lord. And he shall give you, O forever person, the spirit being, the spiritual desires of your heart. The spirit being is supposed to have spiritual desires that equal and are the same as the king on the throne of the kingdom of heaven. Those spiritual desires, they get transferred to your soul and out through your physical body. You have to study what the king's desires are. If you go read Isaiah 60, 61, and 62 of the Old Testament, you will learn. He desires for our spirits, the forever person, to be the righteous ruling king, ruler of my system, of my physical body, of my soul, and of my spirit, through his governor that he sent into me, his Holy Spirit. I'm a traveling temple traveling kingdom wherever i go that's the throne i learned that by watching english historical dramas and historical biographies when the king traveled to any house that became the official residence the king was in power and even in somebody else's house the throne was him the power is in him. So I had to study kings in our history, empires. I had to study. I had to study and understand kingship, edicts and decrees, ministers, war, generals. I had to understand and have a deep understanding of kingdom. When the Romans came into Jerusalem, it was a kingdom. There was an emperor. Christ Jesus is a king who is a priest, who is a prophet, who is a teacher, who is a minister, who is a soldier, who is a God himself. He even said his father, the great I am, was in him. The Holy Spirit. Jesus never really declared himself to be a religious leader, but a politician, a king who was a priest. The Roman Catholic Church showed us what that looked like. First, you'd put on a white robe of righteousness. That's your priestly robe. Then you put on your armor of God, your full armor. And we would say that when the popes would go to war. You were two in one, so to speak. You had a lot of gifts from the Holy Spirit. You were to take territory. You were to help conquer minds, unbeliefs, go against the spirits that were not of the kingdom anymore, in the kingdom of darkness, who had been ruling in people's lives and minds when taken over down here. This is a battle. You must get a warrior's mentality. But you must understand. To study World War II. Study the invasions of other nations. Study, study, study. We are taken to Isaiah 58, verses 13 through 14, to help us understand a little deeper what I'm talking about. Isaiah 58, 13. If you, O oh forever person, turn away your foot, your deeds, your actions, your thoughts from the Sabbath, that means the resting in me, the following in me, the relying on me, my ways, my thoughts, and my word, and start doing things your way. My husband is an, an example of that. He was born again when a small child, Lutheran. He believes in Christ Jesus. 
even asked me to pray for him many times. But his soul has turned away from the righteous God who loves children and babies and innocent ones. The Ten Commandments say you shall not kill. Period. You shall not take the lives of innocent children. You shall not sacrifice them to another God. So he has turned away from the Sabbath, the resting in the Lord and resting and believing in the ways of the Lord. He's, his soul rules him, which is connected to his biological body, formed and shaped by the world of the kingdom of darkness. So when you turn away from the Sabbath, the resting in God in his ways, from doing his work, you're in trouble. But he is saying, he said, if you will turn from doing your pleasures on his holy day, every day is his holy day in me. I have to turn away many times from things that I would like to do in the natural. Like I said, I don't vote anymore. I'm not a part of this political system, of this government. I serve a higher power. I serve a higher government. I am his ambassador to this government on planet Earth. But he is saying, if you will stop doing these things, as my husband's doing, he can vote righteously. There are parties uh, that do not believe in abortion in the political system, and there's politicians. He can vote if he wants to vote, because he's not where I am at. But if he will stop doing these things he's been doing, from doing his pleasure on the Lord's holy day, and instead call the Sabbath day a delight. Now, in the Jewish religion, a certain day of the week is the Sabbath week. Every day is that for me. So we're learning that how you find out who you're serving and who you are committing yourself to is we're looking deep. So he is saying that you must return to me. You must stop doing your pleasures that you want and delight in. And you must look to him, the Holy Lord of the kingdom of heaven, who is honorable and righteous. And shall you honor him? My husband does not honor the God of the Bible. He honors another God. He does not know that, but he does. The God of death. The gods of the political party he votes for. He doesn't say the God of the Bible as his Lord and King. Doesn't really know his ways. He's been doing his own thing that the world has taught him. His experiences have taught him. He has been seeking his own pleasures. But he only speaks the words of the kingdom of darkness. And here in this scripture, we're learning, if you will turn from all of that and come back to the righteous path and commit your life, your ways, your thoughts, your ideas, your actions to him. If you believe he loves those children in the womb, do you know that I go to many, many wombs of women who have chosen abortion? I don't go physically, I go spiritually. I hold the physical body in my arms while I'm holding the forever person, the little child in there. As death is coming through medicine, through cutting its body parts apart, sucking its brains out. 
I am holding the forever person in there, the child. Blessing it, looking into its eyes, holding it as death is coming. We will not lose one of those. Death will not win. That forever little child is handed to an angel, as you can see here. And off to the heaven they go. Death will not lose them. The victory of the God of Moloch will not lose them. But the victory of death will not succeed. That is what I do. That is who I am. I'm working in a realm that is unseen to our natural eyes. So here the prophet Isaiah is trying to tell us if we will turn from our ways of doing things, our pleasures, what we think is right, from going our own way, having our own pleasures, following after the kingdoms of this world, governments of this world. And we will begin to turn back to the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Ten Commandments, the God of Christ Jesus, the God, the great I am. He says, verse 14, when we turn from our ways, our thoughts, our beliefs, then shall you, O oh, the forever person, you shall delight in yourself, in the Lord. Once you turn and ask his forgiveness for belief, I had horrible beliefs. I have a story about I used to believe that Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy were real, but I was them. My parents ta taught me through example, that this is what you did. I had a, a concept, a belief. I passed that on to my son. I tricked him. I deceived him. I lied to him. I was the tooth fairy. I was the Easter bunny. And I was Santa Claus. I had to want to be clean of everything that was dishonorable, that was a deception, a lie, a vain imagination, thoughts of men, culture of this world. I didn't want it in here. It was like a spot, a cancerous spot. And I wanted it removed. So one night, God did, when I was reading the Bible, about vain imaginations and traditions of men. <gasps> An aha moment came. I had been lied to by my parents. And I was lying to my child. I was a deceiver, a bewitcher a liar to my own son. God made me go and get on my knees and ask my son to forgive him for lying to him about the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, and the Tooth Fairy. You have to want to be clean. You have to understand when you have evil, wicked thoughts. You have been deceived yourself. I didn't blame my parents. I don't blame society. But I had something in me I didn't want. I wanted to be clean. And when you want that, you have opened yourself up now for light and truth to come in. You must get the revelation that what you were believing in, practicing in, was wrong, evil, wicked, not of the kingdom of heaven, not of God. And you want it removed out of your mind, your thoughts, your beliefs. If my husband could get the revelation that by him voting for a politician who believes in abortion, it's not of the kingdom of God, and yet he's following that, that he's not a righteous person, he has deceived himself, he will feel bad, just like I did. And then he should ask God to forgive him for participating in murder, killing innocent babies and children by voting for politicians who state in their political platform, who fight for it, 
in Congress and believe in it. That he is followed after another voice besides the king who said, Thou shalt not kill. And thou shalt not kill innocent ones. He is saying, If you can get there, I got there. Then shall you, O oh, forever person, you'll delight in yourself, you'll be happy inside, and you'll be happy in the Lord. And the Lord says to us, I, the Lord, will cause you, O oh, forever person, to ride, to rule upon the high places of authority and dominion on the earth, from the kingdom of God and from the kingdom of heaven. And I will feed you and nourish you and teach you with the spiritual heritage, the covenant of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of the voice of the Lord has spoken it. Got to study Jacob, who became Israel. Go study what God spoke to him when he's laying on a rock about his descendants. You must study history, our ancestors, who they served about their lives. That's why history is so important. Studying ancient history. I watch movies every night of ancient historical Chinese dramas, World War II, the history of Europe, the histories of the Incas, the American Indians, the history of the world, the first explorers, ancient Greece and Egypt, Persia. I study how Saudi Arabia became a kingdom. Study early colonizations of the world. Study the opium wars. Study slavery. Study business. Study trade, politicians. Study. Watch true stories of people. Study. Go back. Look into ancient times. Study. So if my husband will turn back away from his belief, stop voting for politicians who believe in abortion, you will have delight in the Lord. The Lord will be so happy. You'll be able to rule over his thoughts, his feelings, his kingdom within himself. He has no peace in it right now. He really has no joy. He's afraid of death. He really does. He has deep thoughts, but he doesn't express them. He is a creature of this world from his soul. So now let's go back to Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Verse 5. Commit your ways, your deeds, your acts unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Not only you say, I commit my life to the Lord, but now you must trust him. I have walked close to death, near heart transplants, been almost stabbed in my heart in my own living room by somebody I was trying to help, almost run over through cars running red lights. I have been poisoned, almost kidnapped. You must have the the trust in the Lord for your life. You will learn about how the ultimately I had to trust the Lord in the story called It's Time, near the end of my transformation. And he, the Lord God, shall spiritually bring it to pass. God asks you to trust first, then he brings it to pass. Trust in him no matter what, even if death is coming. When the scissors were coming down by the hands of a young lady named Amanda, it wasn't her spirit that was doing it. It was her mother who was in her physical body and a demonic spirit 
you are going to kill me. I had discovered some secret dark things about her mother and told Amanda. As the scissors were coming down and were inches from my heart, all I said to the Lord was, I was frozen and paralyzed. They'd put a spell on me to keep me quiet so I could not call to my husband who was in the back room or my son downstairs. I said to the Lord, make it quick and I'm coming. I'll see you. No fear. Because really you want to be with him. You want to be out of this world. But I have work to do. So I have to endure. I'm like a soldier sent behind enemy lines. I'm away from home. I'm a minister, a traveling ambassador, doing the work of the kingdom of heaven in a foreign land called Earth. It takes a lot of courage to be here, to stay here, to minister here. The attacks are real. They're right here in the home, right through family members. COVID was rough. I didn't take the COVID vaccination. Now, what I did was I said, Lord, who's behind it? And what do you want me to do? He directed me and he vaccinated me himself. And I got the second shot also. My family fought and argued with me, wouldn't see me, threatened me, but I held. It had nothing to do with misinformation or disinformation. I just, my life is in his hands and his hands alone. So I asked him what he wanted me to do. It's hard to get there when the pressure is on you, when you're trying to do right. I don't talk to people. I don't express my opinions much. I'm a silent minister, sort of. I don't talk when I'm going through things. I talk to him. I need answers because I don't know everything. For instance, uh, several years ago, there was a lot of prophecies about a president here in America and what was going to happen and all this stuff. And uh, I asked the Lord, what, did he say all that the prophets were saying? He said, I would have to wait and see. So it took several months. And what they prophesied or said that the Lord told them did not happen. He said, see, it wasn't me. I never listened to him again. So sometimes we have to wait and see what happens before you get your answers. My faith has to grow. It's trying to grow even to the level of Christ Jesus is. Not there yet. But I'm working on it. So let's go to verse number six. And he shall bring forth, the Lord, your righteousness as the light, the truth, and your judgments as righteousness, the sun's glory at the noontime of day, bright and glorious. See, this is like the sun. It's bright. It's glorious. This is God's righteousness coming up. Our son shows us him, if you're looking. There is a God, or he thinks he's a God. He said, Lucifer becoming Satan. He has chosen to have the moon as his representation. But do you know that the moon only can show its brightness because the sun shines on it? The sun needs nothing from anything to make it bright. It is a self-contained fire, a light. It shines on a dead rock called the moon. So this other god, he chose the moon. He wanted to rule the nighttime, the darkness, which means ignorance. So here in this word of encouragement, we are learning there is a lot the Lord wants to do with us spiritually. If we will turn from our ways and our deeds that are unrighteous in his eyes. He wants to bring forth, this is his heart right here. He wants to bring forth righteousness 
that means right standing, glorious, that shines out of you as a light. It's the truth. And your judgments are righteous. When I challenged husband and said, you are not a righteous person. You have deceived yourself. You do not love the baby in the womb or innocent children because you vote for politicians who believe in abortion on demand at any stage. My judgments were right. They were light and righteous and good. It was as the sun had shone on him. He became quiet and said nothing. I had to learn how to challenge leaders, politicians, family. When the time comes, most of the time I'm very quiet, say nothing. I observe, I watch, I listen. So in this word of encouragement, we are learning whose ways do you commit yourself to? Husband was not committed to the God of the Bible, the God of the kingdom of heaven, the God and Father of Christ Jesus. He was committed through his deeds to the God of death, Moloch. He was serving a political party by polling and voting for <clears throat> politicians who believed in abortion. So, this word of encouragement is for you to do a self-reflection on yourself. And ask yourself, whose ways, whose truth, whose righteousness and judgments do you commit yourself to? Who are you, what are you going to say to him when you die? And you're as this young man down here. And he says, who'd you vote for? Why'd you tell that lie? Why did you go after money? Why did you lie to the people who elected you? Why did you do and steal, kill and destroy? You're going to be asked that question. And it's better to get it cleaned up now than to have to stand in being humiliated, sent to outer darkness, maybe even to hell itself. Because your sin will be seen. Do you know I live with CIA satellites on me? Phone, emails, everything is watched. Eyes are looking, listening. I have become an enemy to many on planet earth. And therefore I am on the list to be killed. Whether it's in spiritual dreams, spirit work, in the natural, I'm on the list. I've been there probably 30 something years. They've tried. But God has always been there by my side. So this question to you is for you to ask yourself. To look inside. And ask whose ways do you commit yourself to? If you are as my husband and commit yourself to those who vote for abortion, believe in it. But yet you make the statement that you don't like to see innocent babies and children killed in this war in Gaza and Israel. But you, your actions show us you don't care about children or babies. You're killing them. You are guilty of murder. You are a partner in murder. He didn't like it. He said nothing. Hung his head. 
hopefully when he goes to the voting booth the next time. That's the one issue that I chose when I was voting, whether you believed in abortion or not, whether you fought for it or not. And then I'd pull the lever or make the mark. That was the only choice that I used to decide if you were a righteous politician, one that could rule righteously, because it told me whose God you were serving, whose ways you were committed to, the God of life or the God of death. So that ends this word of encouragement for this week. It's a deep one. And I had an example from my own personal life to tell you. I don't hide things. I don't pretend like the world or even my family is good. Hey, I miss my mark sometimes. And I have to ask my husband to forgive me. But most of the time I'm quiet. Watching. Studying. Learning. I do a lot of work in the spirit realm. A lot of work in women's wombs. That's right. So here today, in this word of encouragement, ask yourself, whose ways do you commit yourself to? The ways of the king of heaven, his, in his righteousness, his judgments, his laws, or somebody else? Take a deep breath. Sit and think. And explore your own self. To answer the question and I'll see you again next week on another word of encouragement father help them to self-reflect to look deep into their own lives and to be honest father this is how you bring about revelation light transformation and a cleansing if there are things within them that are not of God take them out whether they're evil, wicked spirits, thoughts, concepts, diseases, illnesses, whatever they are, help them to see the truth and the light of themselves, their thoughts of their soul, their actions, that they may change and come forth as you desire, as children of the light of the truth. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Okay, see you next week. Bye.